All right, here we are back in Illustrator. And I just, I just wanted to show you how to set it up in the last video and then show you how layers work differently in Illustrator than they do in Photoshop. So they are organizational. The reason I locked my sketch layer after dimming it to 50% was so that I can turn it on and off to see the clean vectors I've created. And then it looks like my vectors are just on one layer. But in fact, if you use the drop down arrow, every time you make a new shape, just like using shape tools in Photoshop, it will create what's called a new path. And those path layers, as long as they're not overlapping, even sometimes when they are overlapping, they will always be separate and they can be selected separately. The little color is automatic to a new layer and that will give you, so this is now a red layer, which is pretty typical for your first vector shape. So now everything that's selected within this layer is going to show with red anchor points. It doesn't mean there's any red in my design. It just helps me see those anchor points. If I continue this process, right, I can use all of the advantages I've learned from compositing. So let me refine this shape a little bit with that small selection tool. And so far, all I've used is the pin tool and the small selection tool and the shape tools, which are a really good way to minimize your use of anchor points so you don't have a ton of them. And so that's the shape I want. Now what I'm going to do is use the delete anchor point tool and trim this down. Sometimes you have to zoom in. And Illustrator is actually primarily designed to be used with a mouse because it's older. So it really relies on precise clicking, <laughs> like moving those, those curves in. And you can always do Command Z. And unlike Photoshop, you can do Command Z as many times as you need to right until you opened it because they don't take up a lot of memory. Now I'm going to show you this really nice trick for getting symmetrical shapes. Right, so now I'm going to take this. I have it selected with my large selection tool. I'm going to hit Command C and Command. Actually, I'm not going to do Command V. If I do Command V, it will just paste it, but it will offset it, like you see there. So instead, I'm going to do Command C to copy it, which is Edit Copy. But then I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to do this new option under edit, which is paste in place. And the shortcut for that is shift command V, but that's a little awkward. So I just go to edit paste in place. So that is what duplicate is in Illustrator. It gives you an exact copy right on top. Then if I right click on it, and if I say transform and reflect, this is what flip horizontal is. <laughs> it's not intuitive, but you can flip horizontal by right clicking on it going to transform reflect and then setting the axis to vertical at 90 degrees that flips it horizontally it's like a mirror reflecting a mirror and then you can hold down shift just like in photoshop and then you can overlap them so that they are perfectly symmetrical here is the the pro tip really early on so when you're playing with this you can merge these two together because right now they are two separate anchor points. If I select them both by holding down shift and selecting both of those anchor, both of those paths, then I can use what's called the Pathfinder tool. And the Pathfinder tool, which is always over here, allows you to merge. It allows you to do other things too, but first to merge. So when we cut out shapes, we use the Pathfinder. When we merge shapes, we use the Pathfinder. Now I have two paths, right, done as vectors, this one and this one. How can I make sure they're centered? Because they actually don't look centered. Well, I've got a center line right there, so I can use guides. So if I do Command-R, I get rulers. If I use one of the selection tools, I can pull guides.
Now, what's interesting is the guides will be linked to the layer. So you see how the guide is separate. It's like its own path in my layers. And I want to move that guide. Let me move it. I've got to select it. Or I can move this one. <laughs> I could always put a new guide out, but I'm just going to line that up. And then I'm going to line this one up so that they are centered on each other. Okay, now my sketch. There we go. Now, just like with the shape tools, I can start duplicating. So I can select this one, this bar, and then I can do command C, command V, and then move that over. And then with the large selection tool, I can scale it down and I can even rotate it just like free transform, just without the warp. And that works great. That's exactly what I want, except I want it flat on the top. So in order to get it flat on the top, I have to use the small selection tool and I can pull a guide down to show me where that line is. So guides are really helpful in getting really clear, exact logo designs. So now I'm going to pull that up and pull this up. And they'll stick to the guides. There we go. And if I want to pull it down, I can use the large selection tool. Or I can use the small selection tool and hover over. Oh, I've got too many anchor points because of the, the, the rounding corner tool. So I'm just going to use this, pull it down. Yep, it's still there. Very good. Now I'm going to take that path, same thing. I'm going to duplicate it, Command C, Command V. I'm going to move it to here and going to shrink it down. Maybe rotate it a tiny bit more. And you don't have to hit return. You just have to cl click off of it. And then I'm going to line this up. It looks like it's pretty lined up. Good. All right, so now I'm on my way with my vector. You can also turn your guides on and on with command semicolon. So I have these vector shapes now. Now I'm not going to reflect them over until I'm really happy with them. So I want to maybe get this angle right so it feels parallel. So I'll work with that next time. All right. So now, very important, how do you save your work? We're going to save in a new format. We go to Illustrator, File, Save As. We're going to save it to our computer and we're going to save it as an AI file with your name. So this is Carl assignment four. This is my, I guess, Navy vector logo to my desktop as an AI file that will open up in Adobe Illustrator, but it will not open up in vector.com, right? So, to open it up and play with it in vector.com, you're going to want to say file, save as, or save as a copy to your computer, and you're going to change the format to SVG, which is Scalable Vector Graphic. All right. And then, then you're good. You're free to close it and then organize your work into your folder. So your SVG, that is what's called a transferable format. You can open it in multiple programs. And then my AI file, that's the green one. That's the one I'm currently working on. Oh, it's not finished, so it should be yellow. And just really quick, I'll show you how do you open it in vector.com. So we open up vector.com. It's linked right in the assignment. Or you can just open it up. You sign in. And there are benefits to signing in because vectors don't take a lot of memory, so it will remember what you've done in the past. 
go right to, I guess, my designs if you're signed in. You'll see some of my past things. And you can say, open file. And then you're going to open up your SVG. So if I go to my folder on the desktop, let's see. It's right here. And it's assignment four. And it's my SVG right here. That is what I can open. And you'll see the layers here, and you'll see the grouping. All right. That will do it for now.